All right, I'm putting the pistons in. I'll freely admit I don't really have a system for this, but I'll uh, I'll go through at least what I'm doing. You can see I already put one in, uh, piston number one. I'm going to put piston number two in next. First is just wipe down that bore. And then apply some oil fairly liberally in that bore. And on your piston assembly, now first thing I'm going to do is take the cap off. And then I'm just going to put a little wrap of duct tape on the end. Next we're going to put some oil right on the piston. This is also the last chance you have to verify that these ring gaps are all opposite one another. So I'm just going to do a little final tuning on that. That's good and that's good. Okay, I've got one of these piston ring compressors. Pick this up at Harbor Freight for 10 bucks. All right, once you've prepped the bore and the piston with a coating of oil, just drop it in. Make sure you're putting it into the correct bore. This is piston two, going into bore number two. All right, now take your compression tool and begin tightening it up. Secret of this, see if I can get one more click on it. Yep. And I just kind of use my fingers to make sure it's all wrapped around evenly all the way around. All right, I got all of the rings. Now take a plunger of any kind. I'm using a piece of pipe with a bunch of duct tape wrapped over it. And what I found is you give it one good, solid, quick pop. To drop it straight down. If you lightly tap, 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 it will not work. And don't be too afraid of giving this thing a nice pop. So here we go. Just like that. That will push that piston down right into that bore. And you repeat that for the rest of them. As you can see, I have my crankcase tilted up so I get better leverage. The, the uh, crankshaft itself is sitting over on my bench. I don't have it here. What I'll do next is remove all the tape and then um, go ahead and get that crankshaft down onto these journals and then go ahead and uh, tighten up all the, all the connection rod caps. So anyway, that's the procedure to get your pistons into their, into their newly plated bores. I just pulled off all that duct tape from these uh, connection rods. This is the last chance we have now to clean off these big end bearings and oil them up. So I just took a blue shop towel, wiped them down. Put a little engine oil on each one of them. Uh, the factory manual calls for Molly for the connection rod bolts and the caps, the nuts that go on the caps. So anyway, I'm using a little uh, assembly lube from Pro Circuit that I like, and I'm just hitting these bolts a little bit. Uh, I'm not going to talk a whole lot about break-in procedure. There's a million things online about how to properly break in. I will say one thing. I'm kind of a believer in a quick oil change. Um, so maybe 20, 30, 40 miles in. If everything goes well with this motor, I'll probably go ahead and, uh, and exchange the oil out of it. Okay, that's got the bolts. I'm going to hit the, uh, the caps a little bit. Then I'm going to turn this thing back over again and drop the crankshaft in. Alright, so I had to get another pair of hands, but I went through all the bearings, just you know, wiped them down, put some assembly lube and some oil, and then with two sets of hands, with me dropping the crankshaft down, and the other set of hands holding up these connection rods so they fell into the pin areas, we were able to drop this down. Alright, I put all the caps on, and I tightened these nuts down, kind of finger tight, and what I've been watching for is when the cap 
and the connection rod come together. Because remember, when we put the torque wrench on here and apply the final torque, once you get started, you can't stop. You have to tighten it all the way to 25 without any hesitation or pauses. So I think what I can do now is get one set of hands to just you know hold the crankcase and the crankshaft down, and then I'll get on the torque wrench and position myself where I can get like a 270 degree turn uh, without interruption and that should be enough to uh, put the final torque on each of these 25 foot palms on each one of these nuts I also just dropped the drive axle gear assembly back in and I'm thinking that this upper crankcase is now uh, fully assembled enough to bring the lower crankcase and mate them together as I prepare to mate the crankcases, I want to mention one thing about the bonding agent. I've got both the Yamaha Bond or Yama Bond number four, and I've got the Permatex Ultra Gray. There's a ton of these on the market. I know a lot of people like the uh, uh, Honda Bond HT for high temp. I believe this is exactly the OEM gasket material. And what I notice is the big dif biggest difference between these two is the Yama Bond number four is it has a, a lot sort of more liquid like consistency right? it spreads a lot thinner a lot easier this Permatex Ultra Gray is a little bit thicker um, I believe that both of these products would work very well uh, but I'm gonna opt for the Yama Bond number four Final preparation before I mate the upper and lower crankcase assemblies. Cleaned the surface, the mating surface on the on the uh, upper crankcase assembly. Again, acetone uh, wiped down, cleaned all that up all the way around. The procedure on the lower crankcase assembly, pretty similar, right? Wipe all the mating surfaces down, clean them up, hit it with an Ajax pad if you have to. Uh, I then took every single bolt one by one, pulled it out one at a time, wiped it down, wiped it lightly with engine oil, and put it back in place. Uh, I verified that I have all three dowels. There's three dowels between these two mating surfaces. One of them is right there that goes through the bolt. Another one is down where my pinky is right here. And then there's one down at the very bottom right in the center there. Hopefully it's not too out of focus. Those are the three dowels. They're in place, ready to go. Last assembly lube on each of the journal bearings. So with these two halves ready, I'm ready to start putting the semi-drying liquid gasket. This is going to be where I make the two crankcase halves together. First step is you apply the gasket material. And you want to go pretty thin. You want to do it on every part of the mating surface, but you got to stay away from the journal bearings and the oil galleries. But, that, but you still go in here and you still hit those surfaces. Okay, just got finished putting the gasket, uh, semi drying gasket material down on the lower crankcase assembly. And now I'm going to drop uh, the upper crankcase assembly. Now I'm dropping the lower onto the upper. Alright, I've got my torque wrench set at 15 newton meters, which is about 11 foot pounds. And I'm now, uh, everything's finger tight. So now I go through and tighten each bolt in sequence. Each bolt has a stamping on the case next to it, so I know which sequence to do. That's all there is to it. Okay, everything is now torqued down for the second time to 15 newton meters. Next up, this is the final torquing. Bolts 1 through 10 are 15 newton meters plus 45 degrees. So. This is bolt number one. 45 degrees, if this, that's 90, so it's going to be about halfway. 
45 degrees. I'm going to just give it my best estimate here. So, 45. This is right about there. I kind of wish they just give me a foot pound measure, but they don't. Alright, so I finished tightening everything up, but I'm questioning the procedure a little bit because, you know, they have this tighten to 15 newton meters, then back it off, then tighten them to 15 again. So 15 is kind of the baseline. Then, down in the final torquing, several of the bolts are less than 15 newton meters, which means you'd have to loosen them again and then tighten them back to the specification. That doesn't seem to make a lot of sense to me. Um, I'm tempted to leave everything at at least 15 newton meters. Bolts 11 through 15 and a few more are at 12. And then bolts 16 and 24 are at 14, which to me is close enough to 15 not to matter. And then finally, bolts 21 and 22 go up to 24 newton meters, which I did those. So I'm going to leave everything at 15 or above and, uh, and call it done. I think it's close enough. So with that... I'm now going to let the crankcase sit. I'm really happy with the little bead of gasket material that I have everywhere around. It tells me that I put the right amount on the mating surface, real thin. And uh, I'll probably let this sit 24 hours, let that set up a little bit uh, before moving on. Next up is going to be uh, putting the oil and water pump back in and the oil pipe and some of the components here. Finishing up this lower end and the oil pan. Then we'll flip it over, finish up the top end, finish assembling the sides, clutch, and timing gear. And at that point, this motor is going to be good to put back in the bike.